All right. All right. I got it. And I think that we're ready to ready to start rolling. Uh, all right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining me today. John Morris, team leader of the uh, Palos Verdes Market Center. And uh, I have a special guest today for Producers Mindset. Uh, one of the things I you know, really wanted to talk a little bit about today uh, is we get so wrapped up in our business sometimes that we forget, I think, sometimes to be uh, human. And uh, right now, it's, I think, more important than ever to really make sure that we are... Um, one, taking care of ourselves, but then also taking care of our, our real estate agent community. We have the NAR settlement stuff coming down the pipe, right? We're, we've got all kinds of uh, form changes that are happening. Um, real estate agents are kind of under fire a little bit. And uh, we need to, you know, take care of our community and we need to take care of our friends and give back and, and help support each other because we're all in this together. Uh, and so... With all these crazy things going on, I wanted to bring on Michelle Duvall uh, from our market center. Uh, and Michelle is not only a really great agent, um, she also just recently was part of a cultural ambassador for the region uh, from the office. Hey, John, uh, you're you're frozen. Can you hear me? John? Uh, I can hear you. <laughs> I don't know if maybe you'll have to turn off your camera. Do you, if your Wi Fi is, is. Might be. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, now we hear you fine. Okay. So I'm going to keep my camera off for a second uh, <laughs> because my uh, challenge today. So if you weren't hearing what I was basically saying, is that we, uh, I have Michelle Duvall on here. Uh, who is uh, one of our co-cultural uh, regional ambassadors for the LA coastal region. Uh, Michelle and Tammy Faker from South Bay were just recently awarded our cultural ambassador award for the entire region. And Michelle is not just an amazing agent. Uh, she also does so many things back and give, giving back to the community. And in addition to that, does so many things with the PV board and giving back to agents and uh, and really supporting both the local community and the local real estate agent community. And I think that that's really, really important right now. Uh, so that's why I wanted to bring Michelle on. Uh, so Michelle, uh, before we yeah. get started, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of how you uh, got started in real estate? Okay, um, it's been about five years that I've been licensed, but prior to that, I started um, at the front desk where Daniel's at, unlicensed as just an admin. I'm not gonna say just; it's a very big job and really important one. Um, prior to that, uh, prior to that, I did go back get my college degree from Cal State Dominguez in international business, and I was an event planner. So, kind of pivoting off those um, skills that I had and being at the front desk and getting to know all the agents getting to start to plan some of the events inside the office, just as, you know, helping support like the Christmas parties and all that fun stuff that Daniel's really involved in. Um, all of that with my event planning skills that I kind of always loved. I, I almost went full-time into that field instead of real estate. So I kind of felt like I really had a good trait of planning and coordination and, uh, socialization with other people was a skill that I loved to do. Um, the office was really, really socialized back then before COVID. There was, I'd say, three-fourths of our agent roster would come in all the time. And that was just the way it was back then. So I really built relationships. I really nurtured that. They really encouraged me to get my license. I did that. I was inspired by all the entrepreneurs around me making money. I was a single, uh, newly single parent. I went through a divorce during COVID. So I kind of felt like it was my new time to... Uh, just build off the relationships I had. I knew that I wasn't a, it, I knew that the agent bucket, if you want to say, um, of lead generation wasn't really being utilized the way that uh, I knew I could utilize it as a new agent. Meaning um, most people are so focused on getting clients. I was trying to get that first client, but I was also really focused on um, building more relationships with top agents, with even everybody there, not just the top agents. But um, then I joined the board because I was like, well, I want to get to know other agents on the Hill as well. 
because I knew that um, little opportunities would come from that. And, and if I had just one or two small opportunities, I knew that I could capitalize on them and make them into more. So I kind of think that that's the mindset that you guys need to have in this uh, market right now, because it's a very, it's tighter. It's a lot tighter than when I um, entered during COVID. Every, everybody thought it was a little difficult then, but not with, not for buyers because rates were really low. So I ended up sell, like selling under coaching during that time. And as an individual agent, I eventually now I'm on a team, as all of you know, I am no, no longer at the front desk, but I've, I've pivoted off of being involved in the YPN before I was running the YPN. I was just on the committee during COVID watching and observing what the leaders were doing around me. And now that I'm able to, you know, I, I was in charge of YPN last year. Now I'm on the board this year as secretary and I was able to go to Sacramento and just, I'm able to be exposed to what they're doing at the CAR level now. And I see how it trickles down to our local board level and how it affects each market center and how we can really affect change. And I think uh, Tammy can attest to that over at South Bay that um, one individual agent can really make a big change. And once you're building these relationships, I can't even tell all of you how many opportunities I've had and I still continue to get and will have most likely because of my tight relationships I've formed with agents. And it wasn't intentional. I really just love the agents. But at the same time, I knew that there was something to it that I didn't see other agents doing because when I was doing showings for people and getting open houses, uh, their, cl their clients would go out of town for the weekend. I did showings. I started to get paid to do things, started to get paid to do showings in addition to just now. And it got to the point where I was writing an offer for somebody that I'd never had, you know, things like that, where I got to represent buyers in Palos Verdes, uh, writing an offer for an agent because he didn't want to double end. Like there's things that you guys aren't thinking about that will really leverage your business besides going out and just doing the traditional lead generation. So that's what I wanted to say about that. <laughs> so cool. So um, well, a couple things to unpack there, because you said a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I know, is, sorry. <laughs> you had a lot, you, you, a lot of things. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, you know, new, newly single mom, uh, just yeah. getting into the business, uh, involved in YPN, uh, right. you know, involved in the PV board. Um, how do you unpack for us a little bit about, about how you manage your day? Because that's a lot of stuff, right? So how do you, right. how do you find balance to be able to accomplish all that you accomplish. Right. I, um, honestly, I got to the point where I was not using my time wisely enough. I would kind of just go about my day, uh, haphazardly, but then I realized, especially as I began to produce more, I had to really hone down on my time as far as what are my essentials in the day. So I, I would start there with every agent and on the call is like, you got to write down what are the things you absolutely have to do first, like in your day. Like if you have to take your kids to school, like I do every morning, I have to take my daughter. So that's a, a that's a what do you call it? A, a non-negotiable for my day. So I put that into my schedule every morning. Then my my PV board meetings, I'm required to attend. I can't miss. I put those in um, things like that are time blocked in my day first. And then I fill them in with the most important stuff for business in between. And I make sure to do a lot of that inside the office. I do take a, I do work from home sometimes, but I think that if you come into the office during the hours you do have and you use that office time wisely, for me, it's lead generation. And I think for most of you, it should be that as well. If you're not time blocking two to three hours a day to lead generate, yeah, do some training classes as well, especially um, where you guys are most likely on this call. Um, same with me, need to do some training, but I don't go to all the training anymore because I am five years in and because I know that I have some of that and I do need, what I need to do is build my pipeline of uh, business. Cause I have a goal right now of one closing per month. And if I don't meet that goal uh, or more, one or more. So if I don't get that, I'm, I know I need to get back in the lead gen train, but to me, I feel like if you're not making time on the weekends to do open houses, that's considered lead generation by the way. So if you have another job, if you're doing three to six hours of open houses on the weekend, you're doing a good job of time blocking a little um, into your day. So I would just start with essentials because be realistic with your time. Like do what time do you wake up? What time do you have to do certain things? If you go to the gym, what time is that every day? So um, all of those things, the most important things and business should be in the top three there, you know, personal and business are right at the top, but be realistic. So do the essentials and then fill it in, you know? 
Yeah, no, I love that. And That's so what I would basically, do. you know, you're you need to make sure big rocks uh, or, you know, what we call on the 411, the non-negotiables, or I know somebody brought up in a, in a training we uh, did the other day is you got to eat the, you know, you eat the frog first. So the things that you have to do, uh, yeah. you make sure that those are in the schedule so that they get done, uh, which is awesome. Um, so exactly. Now, obviously you told us some of the benefits you get out of, uh, you know, from your business standpoint, uh, that you get from uh, getting involved in a lot of these different things because ultimately right. stuff comes back to you. But why do yes. you think it's really important right now that we support each other as agents and, you know, give back to uh, our agent community? So let's, let's, talk, let's yeah. talk about a little bit about your involvement with the board and right. why it's important to uh, really I, I lock arms right now with, with yeah. other agents. Yeah, right now it's more important than ever, you guys, because like I said, our market's tighter and who, you know, like I said, it does benefit you, but I, you have to give with a good intention. I didn't come at this beginning this like with this whole strategy of I'm going to get business out of this. It it comes from a place in your heart where you're like, I'm going to give without the expectation of receipt because it truly does begin there with wanting to make your community a little bit better. If you can affect some change in your neighborhood, doesn't that matter more to you than just buying or selling a house? Like if you were able to make a change for your fellow realtor that made their career a little bit better, or you brought a class to, to the table that somebody really benefited out of and it kind of changed their business, I think that those intrinsic takeaways are so much more than a monetary gain for me personally. I, of course, wouldn't stay in the business if I wasn't gaining monetarily to be able to volunteer. And that's what you need to understand, too, is you want to be involved in these things, but you have to maintain your business side as well. And um, but it, I mean, I think it's two part without the community. I wouldn't feel like I'm giving back by just buying and selling homes. That's these homes are in the communities we live in. And these these communities need help. There's a lot of issues and there's a lot of laws changing as well. That's the second part of this. You guys, if you're not involved in these classes, trainings, the board, you're not going to know what changes are coming down the pipeline in our industry. And without knowing that the commission changes are coming and what forms are changing. You want to know ahead of times, like I have a kind of heads up on all that, like John does, because we're involved and we, we train and we know before the things change what's happening so that we can prepare ourselves. So I think it's important for you guys to understand um, what is the NAR settlement? Go to facts.nar.realtor and look up the exact moment to moment updates they have on what forms are changing, um, why, what the settlement means, like all these things that you're going to have to communicate to your clients at some point. Um, these are things that you want to already have in your bag by the time the changes take place, because those realtors are going to be a little bit left behind when the the first adopters are already having the conversations and they're doing it well those people are going to seize the business quicker than the ones that are scrambling to figure out, oh, now I better go to some training or better get involved in that board class or that that committee at the board is really understands the MLS because there's an MLS committee, there's a YPN committee, there's a um, all kinds of like errors and omissions and oversights. There's all these different things that you may not hear too much about, but when you really get involved, you'll be realize the value of it. And um, it really doesn't take too much time, you guys. You just just start small. And then, I mean, now I'm doing so much. I even do the executive board PTA at my daughter's school. I'm the Peninsula Education Foundation chair. I am the historian. So I have, I think once you start small, you realize if if it's meant for you, you'll really be able to scale it further than you thought and have more time for it than you thought. Because honestly, I've never been busier with volunteer work or my career's never been better at the same time. So those things are possible. And that's my goal is to strive to maintain that now. But I think for you guys thinking it's unrealistic with your day, don't say that. I'm a single parent. Um, I'm doing all these different things. It's it's managing your time wisely and working really hard and being so passionate that you love it the whole time. Yeah, I think that's the key is being passionate about it, right? Because it's kind of like when we work out. A lot of times yeah. we there, oh, we make the excuse, there's no time. I don't have any time to work out. But then you start working out and you start getting into it. And suddenly you seem to find time every day to make sure that you get that done because it's important to you and uh, because you become passionate about it. So you condense things down a little bit. And I really like it in terms of getting involved and making sure that we're supporting our agents because 
I think the benefit of that is 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 is, is multiple. You, you know, you mentioned getting opportunities because of connecting with other agents. Um, I also think that, you know, at the end of the day, if we're helping support and nurture our agent community and we make each other better, it makes the transactions go better, too, because now I'm getting into business with my friends. Now I'm getting into business with people I know know the business really well and are professional because we've all had those transactions with agents who are horrible agents and it's not a lot of fun and we feel like we're doing all the work so if we're helping elevate and lift each uh, each other up and make each other better um, that just makes you know not only are we helping somebody else out but we're also making uh, the community better and we're making ourselves more professional and we're getting into better transactions with people right Definitely. I feel like I know everybody on the Hill. I, I like walking into a room like at the board meetings or at a team meeting and knowing um, I know, you know, 75 percent of the room, the faces at least um, or their names. But it's just a wonderful feeling because, you know, that these are all the people that have listings on the in our area. And these are all the affiliates that you might be able to work with when you're in escrow. There's so for me, I love that. And I, it gets me to understand who may I want to work with later. Like. If I get to know 10 different loan officers and 10 different escrow people and 10 different home warranty people, I'm going to have a great idea of who I want to work with when I get that next transaction because I have an outside relationship. I've seen what they do. They've presented what they offer at these different different venues and such. So I think, yes, and the friendships, because I, I do have to say that um, there's people I would have never got to know that I truly cherish as um, some of my very close colleagues from YPN now and we chat, we text each other to, to see their growth, to see others' growth that you know, even if you were a small part of is very rewarding. And like, yeah, the relationships are are key. They really um, make, make it worthwhile. Yeah, and well, that's one of the things I tell agents all the time too, is that, you know, agents aren't any different than our buyers or sellers. We, you know, we always say that our right. buyers and sellers do business with people that they like, know and trust. And agents are really the same way. If I don't know you, I can't like you. And if I don't know you, know you and I don't really necessarily like you because I don't know you, I don't necessarily trust you either. And so when you write offers on my properties, um, you know, if two offers are equal uh, and, and my seller asks me, hey, which offer should I accept? Hey, if I know Michelle and Michelle's my friend, uh, I'm going to say, hey, I, I, I'm going to tell the seller, I, I know Michelle. Michelle's a great agent. She's somebody that I trust, and I feel really good about taking that offer. Where Daniel, maybe Daniel is some agent that I've never met before, never seen before. Uh, and I, you know, not that his offer is bad or that Daniel's bad, but I'm going to tell my seller, I don't know who this person is. I don't know what the transaction is going to be like if we go into transaction with Daniel's client because I have no clue who he is. And so I think develop that's one of the key, I think, side benefits of really pouring back into that agent community and getting to know people. Is we're going to have a like if we're on the buying side, we have a much greater chance of getting our offers accepted because of those relationships we've developed. Have you found that in, uh, to be true for you? I definitely have. And in a sense, I'm waiting for it to keep happening or to happen later, because I do think that it's gotten me opportunities such as like when maybe they've already accepted an offer and I want to get in to see the house and submit a backup offer. If they know me, that will happen or it can, has happened, you know, but um, I definitely <laughs> think it, I hate to say this on the call, but open houses as well, open house opportunities, the top, top ones, they're very uh, scrutinizing who they trust. So you want to build these relationships. Even myself, I get open house opportunities and I want to see even I, I'm not scrutinizing, but who are the newer agents that are eager? Who are the newer agents that look like they're coming into the office? I just had an open house opportunity. I put it on Facebook. I only had one person text me and I was a little bit surprised at that because I'm wondering why you guys aren't scouring all these channels like I was as a new agent. I used to call in the MLS city by city. Can I get an open house? This was before I had all these relationships, right? Now I just, they come to me and I'm able to hand them out to people. And that's a great benefit for myself because I love being able to, again, help a new agent. I had to call in. I did give the open house out um, to someone, but I'm just saying things like that. Um, open house opportunities. Yes. Um, knowing who you're getting into the transaction with, because I have had some really, really bad ones and I've had some amazing ones. Most of them are good, but if you have a bad 
um, transaction with someone because of the you just can't get along well. You have horrible relationship for some reason. Like it can really, really affect the buyers and sellers that you try to not let it, but it can. It can really stress you out, and um, I just don't recommend that. So I've learned yeah. from 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 the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think, you know, to kind of end on the note, at least on the get involved with agents, I think the other thing, too, is I think it's really rewarding when you have a friend or friends that are in the business and then you can, you know, provide them maybe a, a class or a training or make a recommendation of things to assist or support them in their growth so that, you know, maybe what you do is the difference between them having to get out of the business because they can't make it and being able to stay in this industry and then being able to continue to develop. Um, I think that's really, really important right now. And I, you know, I know that you do a really good, great job of that. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, I think it is. It's super important right now to, I kind of, in a sense, in a way as well, did it at the time to differentiate myself because um, nobody was really stepping out and volunteering in this way. I was like at the time in this, the, just in this, find something unique and do it. And I mean, that's that's just something I would say is because I didn't know it would take me this far into, I'm honored to have the awards and the recognition, but I honestly, that's just another side benefit, but I did it partially to differentiate myself because I, as I was learning to buy and sell homes. Because if you're not doing something to like build relationships or stand out or get involved and you're just trying to just do one, I mean, I just think you need to differentiate yourself. Like I said, it just build relationships. You never know where they're going to take you. And um, in my my opinion, it's taking me so much further than I ever could imagine. And and enriched our life, it enriches your life. So don't be on your own little agent island because it's going to be a lot for. It's a lot harder. That's what I refer to it as. We, these I have a lot of connections with agents on their own islands and I get opportunities off of it. But there are people that have been at KW since I was the front desk that have never come in, never had real, real relationship, real, uh, relationships with people. But they have business somehow. They've built a book of business over time, you know, with their. And so they call me and, and they only have me. I'm like their lifeline. And then I realize how important just one relationship with one agent can be. And. And I encourage the people to come off those islands, like the ones that come into the team meetings and you see Didi Sue, you see all of us there together. Like that is where you're collaborating and you're you're leveraging off of possible opportunities from collaboration. Because if you don't have a listing, guess what? There's someone in the room does. And I mean, that's what I always used to think is I don't have business right now, but there, everyone around me here does. How can I help them? How can I learn from that? Just even just a shadowing opportunity can lead somewhere and really teach you something, but you're not going to just have people like jumping to give you an opportunity. They want to feel that you want that. They want to feel the re reciprocation of ask for them. Don't be afraid to ask. Cause if you can't ask another agent for something or talk to another agent, I, I think it may be a little hard for you to go out and talk to strangers and convert them to clients. So I would start with agents because once I learned, I can really, really collaborate and talk to agents really well it was pretty simple to go out and to talk to other people and try to convert them at open houses or door knock them or cold call or whatever it was. Okay, guys. Yeah. I, and I, and, and I agree with you, especially, you know, I know every market's a little bit different, but in terms of at least some of our higher price point markets, that's one of the things, you know, someone like Stephen Ha, um, you got a $5 million listing, a $6 million listing, $7 million listing, uh, I got to earn an agent's trust to be able to go and hold an open house like that because, you know, they have an obligation to their clients. It's a little bit different. We're not going to just put, you know, the person who ra raised their hand saying, I want to have an open in there. We got to put somebody that we really know that we trust that we know can talk to clients intelligently. Um, so kind of like you said, pouring back and getting to really know those agents and building that trust with people uh, is going to give you opportunities like that. It does. I'm, I mean, I've had, I, I continue to have them and I'm, I just think anybody can do it, but it takes time because like anything, you don't just, you have to warm up, you know, the bread in the oven, bake it slowly. Like you, it does take time, but if you're not starting now, you're going to be left behind. And so it just, they have a lot more knowledge, experience, and business than you. So if you're not surrounding yourself with those those agents and learning and and you know 
even just saying, hey, congrats on your listing. I'd love, you know, I started with that. I, I would sometimes just call agents and congratulate them on their listing and be like, hey, just so you know, I'm always available if you're out of town or if you need someone to hold your open house. And it, I mean, those things go far. Even if they said no, they were like, wow, that agent knew about my new listing. They had the guts to call me on the phone and congratulate me. And I mean, it's a simple five minute call. I think that if you get yourself in the habit of doing little things like that, knowing what agents' businesses, what's going on in their business, they're knowing you're paying attention. And that alone stands out so much. So, yeah, I love that. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, what do you think is the best? thing about getting involved in say the you know not the agent community but just the communities that you service what i mean why, why should agents really start to embrace um in more involvement in their in the communities that they serve okay well besides the fact that you're just making th the world a better place and it, it feels really good inside i think that the people in the neighborhood and the clients it's something that you can talk about with them if and i'm sure they'll notice it as well if, if you do it in your farm area, it's a really good idea. And if your farm area is where you live, it's even better idea because you're getting involved in helping the community in which you farm and in which you live. And they see you drive down the street and they see you walk the dog and they know your postcards are coming. And they and on your postcard, maybe you talked about how you were involved in the neighborhood cleanup project or whatever it was. Um, there's there's ways to make it about your business, too. But I really think that the first part of it should come uh you know, from a good place of intention of just, for me, I really, money is money, sales is sales. I, I've, I've just, I like um, making it a little bit better than I found it. I know I can't do it by myself. That's why I joined committees or I, I need, we're on these, you know, these boards and these things for our neighborhood councils and stuff. There's neighborhood councils in every single neighborhood, you guys. There's, I live in Harbor City. There's a Harbor City Neighborhood Council. I'm going to start being involved in that so that I can get involved in my local projects here so that my community that I want to buy and sell in sees that I'm a part of that. And they, they know that I'm more than just a realtor in the area. Cause every realtor can drop stuff on the doorstep and be like, Oh, I sold a home here or here's the sales in the area. But if you're the one that's out there in this, in the streets, cleaning it up, taking photos and doing all this stuff, like um, giving back at Christmas time or doing organizing some kind of drive or neighborhood watch thing or whatever it is, get involved in that. Um, and your community will recognize it and see it. And I think they'll appreciate it these days because it takes more to earn business than it used to because it's a harder market. Don't let it scare you. Let the going get tough, the tough get going, right? Like we we rise to the challenge and you're going to earn their business by being of service to them. There's more than one way to be of service, right? Like our community service is huge, not just did you buy or sell a house in the area? You know, we can all talk about that later or, or you can advertise anybody's sales but I think it's just better to say that you made it a better place. You know, you helped and maybe help be a call to action for them to get involved in their own community. That would be even a bigger takeaway or bigger give back to them. I love that. Well, yeah. we're at time drop so many great uh, nuggets on us to get involved with our communities, get involved with our local boards and, and our real estate communities as well. Uh, Michelle, uh, you were definitely a shining example for uh, how real estate agents should behave and act uh, in you. our community. And uh, I, uh, I really appreciate you and, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Sean. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Good guys. Luck out there. You got this. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Michelle. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you all.